Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're going to be talking all about JavaScript build tools. Now, JavaScript build tools are a really modern concept that has come about in the past 10 years or so of web development that have really changed the way that we build sites. And these types of tools have popped up and changed over the years. And the current crop of them is as good as it gets. It is so great right now. So what we're going to be doing is talking all about a little bit of some of the modern build tools, but a little bit about why you might use a build tool. Now, before we get into that, let's talk about leveluptutorials.com. And this is our premium tutorial site where you get access to a new tutorial series every single month, along with every other tutorial series that we've created over the past however long, right? One new one a month. There's over um, just thousands and thousands of video tutorials on this site. And again, like I said, a new one every single month, whether you want to learn modern things like Svelte Kit, or if you want to learn code automation with GitHub and so much more, head on over to leveluptutorials.com forward slash pro, sign up for the year and save 25% or sign up your whole team and everybody can share billing as it goes. Again, there's a new course every single month, many of which are quite long, building Svelte components, e-commerce on the Jamstack, level two node authentication, modern CSS design systems, and so much more. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about JavaScript build tools. Now I'm going to start with Gulp, um, not because Gulp is the most modern and by no means it's, it's not. Um, Gulp's been around for a little while, but Gulp has a really nice diagram, which you may see repeated on some of these other build tools, which will tell you a little bit about what exactly they do. You see, we have TypeScript, a PNG and Markdown on top. They go into the Gulp and they come out JavaScript, WebP and HTML. So what's the difference between what's up top and what's down bottom? Well, the real difference here is that you have things that the browser can't read. TypeScript, browser can't read TypeScript, or a PNG, which is in the best image format for the job. They go into Gulp and they come out as a JavaScript, which the browser can read, or a WebP, which is a more optimized image format. So what this diagram is saying is that a build tool, it sucks up the code that the browser cannot read, whether that's TypeScript, Markdown, um, or even things like Svelte or React files, things like that, the browser just can't read as its own. It compiles them into something that the browser can read. Also, along that way in that compilation process, typically what it does too is it merges files together. That's called concatenation or it removes the white space and variable names. And that's called minification where the, the code gets really scrunched. This all along giving you the best, most performant code that the browser can then read. Okay. So again, it sucks up code that is unoptimized or that the browser just straight up can't read. And it turns it into something that the browser can read. And that's really the same thing that you'll see on all these tools. No webpack here. Sucks up all this stuff, spits out these ones. And that's really the long and short of it. Your tools here, they allow you to use modern features in code or features that are exclusive to non-standard languages and have it be output into something like JavaScript. Now you might be thinking it's got, come on, I use just vanilla JavaScript, uh, vanilla HTML and CSS. Why would I need something like this? Well, in reality, a lot of the features that we use in modern web development today are either not compatible with all browsers across your compatibility range that you need to support for your users, or potentially there's a feature that's just in one browser that's not in the rest. Or maybe there's a feature that's in stage, I think stage three, whatever, it's right about to be added to JavaScript and you want to use it today. Well, you can do all of that and more with JavaScript builders. I think one of the, the most important reasons why I use a JavaScript builder is for performance. You know, you get that concatenation, that minification, and you get all that stuff taken care of for you. I also personally, there's not too many sites I'm doing without TypeScript in 2021 here. I'm, I'm one of those TypeScript people where I absolutely love it. It's a giant pain when you're first learning it, but after you get past that barrier, you really grow to love it. I, I, I feel like writing code without Java or without TypeScript today is uh, so difficult. Um, at least to, to write really great code, right? So I'm a big TypeScript fan. And so with any of that stuff, you need a JavaScript build tool. Now the JavaScript build tool of my choice is Vite at vitejs.dev. Now we did a whole video on Vite, and this is something that you can actually check out in the what is Wednesday playlist. We talk all about this. If you want to learn more about what Vite does, but Vite allows you to have a vanilla TS project spun up in no time, along with React TS, Preact TS, Svelte TS, any of this stuff. 
um, allows you to have these spun up in no time or even just straight up JavaScript. And many of these tools like Vite also give you things like a development server, meaning that when you run these build tools, it's not only concatenating, minifying, whatever, but it's also serving them up at a local server for you to develop on for your local development, which is something you need on any project that you're working on. They also have things occasionally like hot module reloading, which is where instead of compressing and modifying and minifying it all together in one, you take one file, you modify it, and you shove it into the browser with a WebSocket, and now that gets updated and you can now use that latest file. Uh, that way you get instant changes on a tiny bit of your application instead of having to recompile your whole thing every time. It's awesome. So if you're looking for something, check out vitejs.dev. There's also something like Parcel, which Parcel's diagram is very similar. Take all your assets here and they put them in a box so you can ship it, right? And that's why there's a box here. This is a very similar type of diagram. Again, it does all the same things, hot module replacement, um, automatic transforms with no configuration file. It's very fast. And Parcel's main claim to fame is that unlike Webpack, where there's this monstrous, ugly config file, Parcel, you don't have to config it unless you need to. And um, you can see it's also quite a bit faster according to their own internal benchmarks. But if we are talking speed here, uh, Vite is going to be the fastest of them all. Well, the fastest of the ones I'm showing you here, at least. And that's largely because Vite uses something called ES Build, which is a JavaScript bundler which is another word you'll also see used interchangeably here, bundler, build tool, whatever. But a uh, ES build is a fantastic build tool written in the Go language, and it is for compiling JavaScript very fast. Now, this isn't necessarily a tool that you yourself will use on your projects. It's a little bit more lower level, but tools like Vite use ES build behind the scenes to take advantage of these insane speeds. The 0 0.37 seconds for something that it takes Webpack 55 seconds to do. Let me say I can vouch for this because we use ES Build. It's fast. Um, it's very, very fast. And they also do things like tree shaking where you're removing code that uh, is not being used to make your bundle smaller. So a lot of really awesome stuff here um, that allows us to really write performant modern code and have that serve to the browser without us having to worry about if it's going to work, if it's going to be fast or whatever. And granted, you still gotta worry if it's gonna be fast, but you're not gonna have to worry about the minutia of minifying and those types of things because your build tools got it. So if you want my pick, if you want something that's really easy to get up and running, Parcel is probably the easiest to get up and running. Uh, Vite is my favorite. Also very easy to get up and running. By no means is this one difficult at all. But I would pick either Vite or Parcel or Snowpack, which is not one that we covered in this video. Either way, if you want to learn these JavaScript build tools, head on over to leveluptutorials.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this cleared up a little bit about what a JavaScript build tool is and why you might use it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.